Hello there and welcome to this episode of Revision TV. My name is Christy Browning. I'm a motivational, inspirational speaker, author, and coach, and your host for this episode of Revision TV, where we come each week to encourage, empower, and inspire you to uncover your purposes, your passions, and your possibility. And today, we're going to talk about how to take those pieces of our story that may be broken, that may be not super pretty, that may be somewhat of the things we want to hide or tuck in the closet, how do we pull them out, embrace them, and make them part of what makes us so great? So stay tuned. We have a lot to discuss with you. So for those of you who may know my story, you know I am an expert on brokenness, on the pieces of us that are bent, that are dented, that are damaged, that may not always be the pretty spots in our life. Because we all go through stuff, right? We all go through things that we kind of don't ever want to go back and relive, or we don't want to, uh, to tell people that. So when I walk up to someone in a party or in a uh, social setting, the first thing I don't do is I don't tell them all the horrible things that I've done in my life, all of my mistakes, all of my failures, all of my, you know, bumps and bruises and things I've done wrong. Nobody would do that, right? <laughs> because those are not the pieces of us that we are most proud of, or maybe they're the things that we kind of want to forget. But the, re the reality of it and the long and short of it is that we all have those experiences. We all have the things that leave us somewhat maybe ashamed of the things that we've encountered or the things that we've done, or they're the pieces of us that we're really not super excited about letting the world see. But let me twist that for you. And while I still wouldn't just walk up to a random person and introduce myself as, hi, I'm Christy Brownie, I'm a convicted felon, uh, I do know that that part of my story is a beautiful shade in the whole painting and the whole tapestry of my life. And when we can learn how to take our disappointments, our failures, our mistakes, the things that we've done wrong, and put them into our overall story, uh, and to create that as um, an element of our story that gives us wisdom, gives us perspective, makes us a richer person, gives us um, depth to who we are, that's how we can take what was bad and turn it into good. So there's this scripture in the Old Testament of the Bible that says that God will give us beauty in place of our ashes, meaning if we give him the crappy, he gives in return something really beautiful. And while that doesn't mean that all of our past mistakes and failures go away, it just means that they have a purpose. They, they can't have meaning. They can't have a positive influence in who we are and what we're about. There's also a scripture in the New Testament that says all things work together for good for all of us who love the Lord, meaning when he is in our life and we have things that aren't so great, he figures out a way to take what was meant to harm us and hurt us and be crummy and crappy in our life. And he turns around and uses it for good. And it's kind of miraculous how that happens. So let me just give you a little bit of a background uh, before we dive into some very specific things you can do to embrace the beauty of your brokenness. So I grew up in a home where I had amazing parents, I had amazing home life, kind of like that Donna Reed sort of uh, family where everything was great. Yeah, we had some tough times. Yeah, there were some bad days, but as a whole, it was an amazing like childhood. Somewhere along the way through young adulthood, getting married, being an adult, going out on my own, I had a long series of poor choices and a long series of um, decisions made to get the approval of other people. All I wanted was to have the applause and the approval of others. And it led me down a very twisted path of what I thought was true, but it was so many lies. And through the course of that, and being so off course, I ended up catching a felony case. And we say catching, like we caught a cold. Uh, let me just say it was I really believe personally, it was God pursuing my heart saying, girl, you got to get this together, like pull your head out of your rear end and get it together. Um, and so while I may have gone uh, to serve some time on a charge that the court has in their documents, I know personally, that was like a life change experience. Like I needed that rock bottom experience to, to pull my life together. Um, but I ended up serving 
a little bit over a year in prison for a felony fraud charge. I've never really been in trouble before. And then that happened and I haven't been back, thank goodness. Um, but that is a part of my life. That's such a, um, a, a kind of an embarrassment. There's kind of some shame wrapped around that. Most people don't walk around the, you know, in their normal life in the grocery store and tell people in the checkout line. Um, yeah. And I, I have a felony just so, you know, like we don't broadcast that. Um, I came home from serving time and then I, I went through a divorce within the first year of being home. And that was another element of shame, if you will, of brokenness um, for me. I come from a long line of, of beliefs that divorce is not what is ideal for marriage uh, and for couples. And so it was really hard for me to be okay with like checking divorce on the application or on a form um, that I was divorced because I never wanted to be divorced. That never was in my uh, scope of what my life would hold. I also didn't ever think that my life would include a bankruptcy, a home being foreclosed on, um, having a car repossessed, um, you know, having bill collectors call me all hours of the day. Um, so listen, when it comes to mistakes and failures and brokenness, I've ran down the path, let me tell you, um, more times than once. And so I say all of that not to make light of any of those issues by any means and to not diminish the impact those experiences had. But I share that with you to prove a point that they have shaped my life. They have brought perspective. I have learned some lessons. And now I do talk about it a lot um, in a public platform on social media and big stages and big audiences because I want people to learn from my mistakes and I want them to see that no matter what your like line of mistakes looks like, you are not too far gone. There's always hope. And so today I want to give you four specific things that you can do to, to move past shame and embarrassment on maybe those things that have happened in your past, but to embrace them and allow them to serve a purpose, to allow them to serve good in your life. And so these are four things that I have done for myself. And all of those things that I just like spouted off that I've been through in life, uh, I've utilized these four things to help take what was meant to be kind of the negative side of my life and turn it into something purpose-filled and positive. And the first thing is that I had to recognize the lessons in it. Because here's the thing, uh, some of those like life lessons, some of those experiences, I don't want to have to redo. I don't want to have to relive. I want to learn the lesson and move on. I don't want to have to go to prison again to learn the lesson I was supposed to learn there the first time. So I had to make myself stop in the middle of all of it and recognize what am I supposed to be getting out of this experience? And if you have already moved past a past failure or a mistake or, you know, setback, and you can't necessarily walk back into that to see the lesson. You can like replay the experience and pick up the lesson. So maybe it means just finding some time to sit down with some paper, with some pen, with a journal, with a notebook, and start writing about that experience. What did it feel like? What got you there? Um, what were some of the emotions that you had? What were some of the consequences that you felt besides just maybe the immediate consequence, but the um, residual consequences? How did it change your life? Um, what's different now because you experienced that mistake or that failure or that setback or that disappointment? And what do you know now that you didn't know then? What do you know now that you didn't know before you experienced that? What is the lesson? What is the, the knowledge you've gained by having that experience? The bad thing is that, you know, we go through stuff, right? Good or bad, by our own hand, or just because life deals us some crummy things. But it doesn't just have to stop there. Like there is purpose found in those things. There are good things to be learned. There are things that can shape us, that can um, mold us and give us what we need to be stronger, be better, have be more refined because of those experiences. But it means that we have to stop to recognize that. If we just try to blow through that experience and we want to move past the pain and we just want to kind of push it in the back of our minds and not think about, you know, what that was like or what we experienced, we may very well miss the most important lesson that we're supposed to get. I remember coming home 
um, from prison and I'm getting to go see my family for the first time. So um, my parents live in Tennessee. I live in Indiana. And so I had come home in January from prison in like in April, uh, end of April, I was wanting to go down and visit with them. And so I had made arrangements with the court um, to do that because when you come home from prison, you're just not free. The day you walk out, you usually have probation or parole or something like that. I had two years of probation, which means I don't get to just do stuff at willy nilly. I have to have court's permission on certain things. Part of that was leaving the state. So I had to ask the court's permission to go to Tennessee to see my family, but I got to go in April. And I remember kind of talking about, you know, what I had just come home to and ex the experience of prison and the whole nine yards with my mom and dad. and I can only imagine how hard it is as a parent to watch your child go through something like that. Um, I can't even begin to really fathom the emotions that they must have went through. But I remember in that in that discussion, my mom saying, uh, you know, well, that's over now. You can just put that behind you and move on. Now, for her, that probably was a, I don't want to talk about this anymore because it's making me like anxious and scared and, you know, emotional that my daughter went through this. So let's just change the subject. But her saying that made me stop and go, no, this isn't just a move on moment. I don't ever want to completely move on from this because I don't ever want to forget the lessons and the life change that happened because of this experience. So to just quickly put it in the back and tuck it away in the closet and move on with the rest of my life would have meant that that time in prison was for nothing. <clears throat> and I don't want that to be the case. I want to have grown and changed and evolved and gotten better because of that experience. So be careful that you don't just run past and push past the pain of that experience or wanting to move past it and put it behind you because there are lessons in that pain or in that experience or in that failure. The second thing is to grow from that perspective. So it's really easy when we experience like hard times or we go through something that's really trying to become jaded and calloused and bitter and angry. And I met a lot of people that were that way when I was in prison. In fact, a very big part of my experience in prison, I was that way. I was full of anger and bitterness and just mad at the world at the situation. But when I grew from the perspective, grew from the lessons. I didn't stay the same as the day I walked into that prison and I didn't leave the same person either. I wanted to grow and evolve in that experience and I wanted to walk out and be a changed person. And I wanted to live life differently. And I wanted to have perspective that I didn't have before. And so all of that experience, recognizing the lesson, growing as a person, discovering who I was, gaining some clarity in my personal life and my personal situation, those were a lot of tools that got added to my toolbox. So when I left that and I came back home, I wanted to, to operate not at this level anymore. I wanted to operate at this level. I wanted to have a better perspective on my life, on my purpose, on you know, my relationships, on my choices, on what controlled my life or was priority in my life. I changed. And I think that when we go through uh, a failure, a setback, a frustration, a disappointment, you know, we can kind of take that part of our hearts and sort of close it off to where we're not, um, we don't want to open it back up. We don't want to go back and relive that pain. We don't want to expose the wound. Um, but really when we can embrace that and grow from it and gain a new perspective, it means that we talk differently. We act differently. We respond differently. And it's not out of pain and anger and hatred and being callous. It's of more compassion and empathy and sensitivity because we've experienced something that maybe a lot of people in our lives have not. I can say in the circle of friends and family that I have, I'm pretty sure I'm the only person that ever has gone to prison. <laughs> so like that is a perspective that only I can bring to the table. And so not only is that unique and special, but it allows me to grow. It allows me to be different. It allows me to amp up who I am and what I offer the world, which brings me to the third thing. And that is allow your brokenness, allow the pain, allow the failures, allow the mistakes, the things that you've experienced, allow that to be something that now makes you sensitive to what other people may be feeling or going through that only you understand. I remember 
Oh man, before I would have gone and served my time, I don't know that I would have thought twice about another woman in prison. Probably never, ever. Have I been sensitive to that? Have I ever had the experience or um, the heart tug to, to minister to those people, to care about them, to love on them, to be sensitive about what they're experiencing? It, it probably just never even crossed my mind. But you can better believe that now, I think about that a lot. I think about the women who don't get letters from family members, who don't get visits from people that care about them, that, that spend Christmas and birthdays and their kids' birthdays and their kids' Christmases away from them and how that feels. And I remember watching and feeling that too, um, watching that emotion play out in people that I knew there at prison and, and having some of those same emotions. That makes me compassionate and sensitive to that specifically. I also uh, remember going through what was a really hard divorce and uh, just the, all the emotion that comes with that experience and realizing that while that wasn't something necessarily I sought out to have in my life or in my story, um, it allowed me to have a heart for people who were going through that or who will go through that or who have gone through that. Um, and in unfortunately in a faith-based community where we don't really like talk about divorce a lot, it's hard for people sometimes to feel that they're loved and accepted if they are divorced. And so I thought this is my chance to show them that God still loves them. I still love them. They still have value. They're still, um, you know, life for them. They're not, you know, ashamed. They're not, they shouldn't feel guilty. Like, you know, there's life here, right? There's some redemption here. Let's, let's not wallow in self-pity and and shame. And I can bring that sensitivity now, having gone through that, I can talk about things that other people can't necessarily talk about because they haven't gone through them. But those emotions and those circumstances resonate with the person that needs to know that someone made it through. Someone went through this and they came out on the other side. And somewhere in your mistakes and failures and setbacks and pasts, you've got something that someone needs to see, hey, they made it through, I can too. And you being sensitive to their situation helps them have that, helps them see that, helps you love others, serve others, give and invest into others in a way that only you can. And there is nothing sweeter when it comes to purpose and beauty and your pain and your past and your brokenness when you can take that, which was meant to be shame and put in the closet and tucked away and forgotten about, and you can pull that out and say, but let me tell you my story and, and give you hope because I came through. And so can you, man, all of a sudden, what was meant to hold you in the pit becomes a platform for hope, becomes a platform for encouragement, allows you to bring out of the darkness and put in the light, the thing that was meant to shackle you, to hold you back, to keep you under. And that brings me to the fourth thing. And that is to tell your story. So often we want to just play the Instagram highlight reel. We only want to tell the world about our successes, our awards, our, you know, highlight moments, our dream vacations, our new house purchase, our, you know, the things, the good things, right? The highlight reel. But what really touches people, what changes lives, what knits us together in humanity, what brings unity and community and support is when we say, I have bumps and bruises. I'm broken. I'm dented. I have these mistakes in my past. I have these things that I'm struggling with. And when we're real and we tell our stories and we share out of our experiences in a way that invests and builds up and encourages others, then all of a sudden there is purpose in the pain. There is purpose in the struggle. There is a reason to celebrate the things that we go through because they're meant to be a guidepost. They're meant to be a beacon. They're meant to be the rumble strips on the side of the road to help someone from going off track. And so we don't have to just go through experiences, have hard times, experience setbacks and failures and trials, and it just be a ding against us, a check in the naughty box, you know, uh, a notch in our belt of shame. No. Now, we don't want to just go make mistakes to just build up our experience quotient. I'm not saying that, right? Let's make good choices. But when we have those things dealt to us or we cause those pains ourselves, 
it is not the end of the world because there is a way for us to redeem our stories, to redeem ourselves, to come out of the pit and sit in the palace and to give people hope because we have made it through. Somebody needs to see you today push through this side of the valley to the mountaintop. Someone needs to see you go through and come out on the other side. And while you may be bumped and bruised and scraped, and you may have scratched and clawed your way to get across to the other side, they need to know, hey, if she can do it, I can do it. And if we really want to create more value in who we are and more value in what we offer the world, it's time for us to be real and honest with our stories. It's time for us to drop our guards a little bit and be able to share out of our hearts, out of our hard times, and out of the things that we've learned to guide and to love and to, as a community, pull together and say, we are not alone and what you are experiencing are not the only one to have experienced it. And the emotions that you're wrestling with, I guarantee you're not the only one who's had them. Let me share mine. Let me show you. Let me tell you. Let me walk with you. And even if that's on just a person-to-person -person scale, a one-to-one -one scale, it's still powerful. You're making a difference in that person's life. I had the luxury of getting to be on stages to tell my story. I wrote a book about my story and I get to see that that hits people on a big platform and in a, in a big audience on a big scale. But that doesn't mean that you have to take a stage or launch a YouTube channel. It just means you talking to your neighbor, you telling a lady at the gym, you noticing someone on Facebook who needs your encouragement. And instead of just constantly looking in in your own circumstances and replaying your pain and your heartache and your mistakes, what if you flipped the script and all of a sudden that became a well in which you can dip out of to give life-giving refreshment, water, encouragement, life, refuel refuelment for that person who needs it most, who's walking through a dry, dirty, dusty, lonely place in life. You could be what gives them the quench of their thirst that would give them the, the hope that they need in this really hard time. So recognize your lessons, learn from them, grow from them, and grow from your perspective. Be different, act different, speak different, walk different in a positive, good way because you've gained perspective and you've gained insight. Be sensitive to others now. See those emotions in them that you now resonate with, that you can speak to, and that you can um, have, have insight into and wisdom to give in that. And share your story with people who need to hear it, who need to be encouraged by it, and empowered to keep going. I promise you, it will make a difference. And in a world where we're all searching for how we can make an impact and be significant and leave a mark, there's no better way to do that than to unpack your story, to come and pull all of that stuff out of the darkness and put it on in the light for the world to see and say, hey, I've been here, but I made it and you can too. I hope you've enjoyed a little bit of this today that you've taken one of these four things that we've talked about and you can start applying them in your life and how you show up on a daily basis. I know it's not always easy to be open and be vulnerable and to share the things that we've experienced uh, that sometimes maybe we want to hide to protect ourselves and to uh, protect our heart because sometimes people aren't so receptive. I can assure you there have been many, uh, many audiences members, there have been many times that people don't really like the story I have to say and they don't look at it as a victory story or an empowering story. Believe me, being a convicted felon comes with judgment. Don't get me wrong. But for every one of the haters, there's three or four people who are applauding and cheering me on and are excited and motivated and encouraged by my story. So focus on the good. Focus on the change you can make and the change you can be. And I promise you won't be led astray. If you want some more encouragement like this, if you're looking for more ways to tap into purpose, to understand your passions and unlock your possibilities, let me tell you, you need to visit me on my website. That's christybrowning.com and come hang out with me on social media. You can find me on Instagram and on Facebook. I'm at the handle at Christy Browning official. I'll link this in the video so you can find me easy and come hang out with me. I'd love to know your story. I'd love to know the journey you're on and how we can walk that together.